Kitchen. So, you read the title, mixing is easy. But you don't believe me and you think that mixing is pretty difficult. It is, if you're planning to become a professional mixing engineer. But we're beat makers. We're responsible for coming up with creative melodies, drum patterns, sound design, you know, the fun stuff. And maybe just a little bit of mixing. And that little bit is all you need to know to make your beats sound more professional. So, everyone can learn how to mix beats and in this video we'll go over this step by step. Number one, leveling the sounds of your mix. This is actually 75% of your mixing process. Once all your sounds are leveled correctly, the mix is pretty much done. Open up the mixer and select the master track. Then open up the fruity dB meter so we can keep an eye on the loudness. We're gonna start off with the kick. Solo it and turn down the volume knob. Now let the loop play and increase the kick until it hits around minus 9 to minus 6 dB. Then increase the volume of the 808 until it also hits the minus 6 C. I always try not to surpass minus 6 when mixing, that, that's why I call it a ceiling. Next, the second loudest sound is gonna be the clap and snare. I don't really look at the decibels with this one, I just use my ears and listen if it sounds good. As long as it isn't louder than minus 6, we're good. For the hi-hat, just make sure it's not too loud, that's a mistake a lot of producers make. Then for the melody, increase it until it starts eating the drums just a little bit. Then decrease it again by one or two decibels. That way the drums will still knock through, but they won't overpower the melody. Now when you have the leveling right, you can do a lot of other things to improve the mix. It's time to clean up with some EQ. Now you don't need to do that much cleaning, because most drum kits are almost always ready to use. But if it's not, you can remove unwanted frequencies and this is how you do it. It's nice to give your beats some texture by adding some ambient sounds, such as a vinyl crackle. Add an EQ to it and remove the lows. Those frequencies are not necessary, they can really mess up the other lows of the beat. The same thing counts for the melody. We already have the 808 or bass providing the lows, which makes the lows of the melody stand in the way. Cut them out. Next, we're gonna do some surgery. A kick sample sometimes tends to have a boxy sound. Create a bell curve and look for a boxy sound around 250 to 600 hertz. If you find it, turn it down. If you want to add more clarity to the kick, boost the highs slightly. For the snare, you wanna cut out the bass frequencies. And if you want it to pop out more in a mix, increase the high mids and or the highs. Same thing for the hi-hats, remove the lows and if you need more clarity, simply boost up the highs. The next important mixing trick, creating buses. A bus is actually just a mixer track. You then send all the drums to that bus and then send that bus to the master track. But, but why? Well now you can disable all the drums at once, which comes in really handy when you're constantly switching between drums and no drums. Also, you can now put an effect on all the sounds at once. This will save you a lot of CPU because you don't have to put an effect on every single mixer. Okay, most importantly, you can now do something that's called parallel compression. This is what makes your beat level up and make it sound like the pros. Parallel compression will glue the sounds together. I, I really can't pronounce parallel. Parallel. Select the drum bus and add a compressor to it. We want to create an aggressive compression here, so lower the threshold a bunch. Set a high ratio and an attack around 10 milliseconds. Why set this to 10 milliseconds? Well, now the compressor starts working after 10 milliseconds, which allows the transient to punch through. Set the gain to 10 decibels, and now it sounds terrible. That's because we forgot the most important step, which is decreasing the mix knob. Now you're basically mixing the original drums with the compressed drums. If you set the mix knob to 50, then you get half of the original and half of the compressed drums. Now lower it until it sounds glued together. If you don't really know how a compressor works, check out this video. Now you still have the feeling like the drums are not punching through the mix. To fix that, add a fruity fast distortion effect to the drum bus. Once it's open, lower the threshold because you want the effect to be subtle. Now decrease the mix knob until you're satisfied. Alright, let's do some creative mixing. Head over to the channel rack and go to the panner knob of the hi-hat. You can hear that when you pull it to the left, the hi-hat will only play on the left side. Same thing for the right side. Right click the knob and choose create automation clip. Go to the playlist and here it is. With this line you can now adjust the panning of the hi-hat. You can go really far with this but again, keep things subtle. Next thing I like to do is add an EQ on the drum bus we created. Create a high pass band and drag it completely to the right. Right click the position control and create an automation clip. As you can see, I have my drums playing in the second part of the intro and because of that the chorus won't hit hard. You can actually fix that with the automation clip we created. If you turn down this line we're actually cutting away the high frequencies. You can even create a curve like this to slowly high cut the drums.
Next, we need to sidechain the kick in 808. And I'm gonna be honest, you cannot skip this part of the mixing process. I actually made an entire video about that, so definitely go check that out. Gotta go now. Goodbye.